the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Let me tell you, we had some pretty interesting moves on the day and it seemed like bears for the most part were taking control, right? All day, lower lows, lower highs, continuation to the downside. But there was a little bit of a banana in the tailpipe. NVIDIA earnings. And that's what we're discussing here on the day is how the market's reacting to these specific earnings. And can this carry the overall tune of the market until we get some more inflation data? That's what's at stake right now, because if this cannot hold up, you're going to see pain across the market. So we have a few signs, a few things that we're looking at that paint the story for the next basically week, week and a half. Let's get right to work. So one, let's get right to it. So with NQ, a uh, really great movement to the downside. You were literally like 15 points away from our little uh, demand zone down here. So we were slightly off, but that was our target. So, so close, uh, but we were slightly wrong here. We will say 15 points wrong. It is what it is. But what we're looking at here for the most part, few concerning signs, okay? You are making clear lower lows and lower highs on at least the four hour type of time frame here. Finally making some lower lows, lower highs. And this constitutes a little bit of a bear trend in these shorter term time frames, right? I'm um, giving you the best for instance is if you go all the way back, you know, to something along the lines of what kind of happened back here, July through October. Now I'm not saying that's happening right now, but this is the best case that I can give you an example of what was it taking place there. Okay. Um, and so you're really seeing if you can start breaking previous lows, because if you start breaking previous lows around these levels down here, that's where things get interesting. And that's where you say, okay, maybe bears start taking control and maybe we kind of move the trend at least, you know, maybe into May or June when they start cutting rates there. Um, but that's what we're looking at right here. That's the concerning part so far. You can see too, even with our looks algo indicator up here, you're only making supply levels on the top side, right? You're not really creating any demands. There's no strong site of buyers just yet. You know, go to the two hour, we look at what's happening here as well. Now, again, you can see that I was just about to mark it out. You have a supply level here. So again, into tomorrow, I'm looking for around a 17.8 touch or move into that. And then the reaction from there will be key. You can also see your previous swing high here before we broke out into all time highs and you can see how we broke retest and continued on up as well so again very big level coming in here that we'll be watching you do have a little bit of a support some volume that stepped in down there but in my opinion i would have to argue um, that this is going to be a little bit more key so if we reject here it's going to be pretty gross but i will say that the buying volume there was very high very high amount of buying volume that showed up. And again, that shows back up because of what happened with NVIDIA earnings. Okay. Now, again, if you are interested in what's these algos and what's happening here with our supply and demand levels, the link is down below. You should get like 15, 20% off uh, when you use our link click, uh, but make sure you check them out now. Also too, yes. Okay. So again, we're automatically looking for some potential upside just to start the day tomorrow right now. As of right now, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Zoom out here. We look really quick. We basically have three levels we're really looking at here on ES, the S&P futures. Okay, you have a lot more demands down here. Our main demand was down here near 49.55. Again, we were four points off. So tough, so close. Um, again, but these are the levels you're looking at. Let's cover them and exactly why we like them. Number one, 50.29 right there. That is your previous all-time high from 2021. That's probably your biggest level here. If ES were to break and mount this, you're expecting a pushback in all-time highs. I'll go back into that here in a second. Next up, the $5,000 level right here, 49.97, 49.98, the basically 5,000 to. That's just a major pivot point on NQ. It just it is what it is, right? It's like S&P 500 holding 500, same thing, right? Coming down here, 49.55, it was basically your SR flipped until you had this really massive push into all-time highs where clearly the momentum shifted, okay? Very big. These are your three levels right now. Now, what I will say here, the difference you can already tell between looking at ES and NASDAQ, ES is much, much stronger. Let me go into exactly why. Although you're making lower highs, right? You are currently having two lower highs being made. You are not making lower lows. That's the concern for bears here. You I mean, possibly put in a, a higher low here, right? So then you're looking more of a breakout of these, you know, lower highs you're making. If you get the breakout here, it's highly likely you shoot up highly 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 likely so what does this tell me right now it shows me on this pullback that where there was weakness it was tech but the interesting part is that you're seeing dow and es hold up far better far 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 better than tech extremely better like nq still looks incredibly incredibly bullish here right 
and credit. You didn't even get close to your demand zones down there. So again, as I look at this side of it, I'm like, man, the markets are still very strong. And it was just, just a little bit of a tech pullback currently, right? And that has to be the main thing on your mind right now as far as looking at this. Now, again, going into tomorrow, although I'm expecting upside, what I will say, this is edgeful. We go to the data analytics here. You know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are our choppy, potentially red days. Thursdays and Mondays are the highest percentage green closing days on the market. When you look at Thursday, you have a 61% chance to end the day green on the S&P. 76% on Monday. Mondays are literally your best days possible. It is what it is. Okay, but Thursdays, pretty interesting how high this is now. This number has been dr jumping over the past few weeks. Thursdays have been some of our best reversals and upside days. And then Fridays, you would tr traditionally get some good closing, but it's just like, a little bit of continuation from that Thursday. Thursdays have been the heavy lifting days over the past few weeks. So definitely be paying attention to this. And again, it helps me side with the upside going into tomorrow as of right now with where we're at. So a few things I want to say. NVIDIA earnings were stellar. And this was like the really big question. And even though they were stellar, I think you're still like currently right now. Let me make sure I'm looking as we speak. I believe NVIDIA, yeah, you're at 730. So you're almost within the measured move. I think the measured move was around 9% was the expected move, okay? Now the question is, is does this hold up into tomorrow? Do you break all-time highs around 745, 750? Can you get that continuation? If you do, the market will easily run, right? Because we saw over the past day, day and a half, semiconductors lost a lot of their momentum and strength, right? There was some concerns there after Pan W and other things along those lines. NVIDIA, really bringing the strength back. We could see Microsoft move well. We could see AMD, AVGO. We could see cloud names start to get love as well because the demand that's so high on NVIDIA is because of the names that are reaching out to use their products, right? And so this shows you what's happening there in the market. And they, again, for instance, I think they were supposed to do 20 billion in revenue. They came out to 22.4. And then the expected move for next quarter was to be 22 billion. They raised expectations to 24 billion plus or minus 2%. Again, they, they do it over and over and over. They're growing 10, 15% quarter after quarter after quarter. And it's just like, what I mean, like, I don't know a company that's done this before. I really don't. So it's incredible what they're doing. And again, I use it for a good, for instance, last year at this time, beginning of the year, they did 7 billion in revenue, 7.5 roughly. They just did 24 billion, 22. They just three X their revenue during a recession, arguably, during when interest rates are their highest, when businesses shouldn't be growing. What's going to happen when those rates drop? And again, this has been the going theme of what happens when rates drop. The market, in theory, gets stronger. The housing market gets all these areas. The, those are things you have to think about. But the question is, is can you hold on long enough, right, for rates to, to get cut? Because if they get cut, you know, they take too long to get cut, then things can get ugly. Things, then things can start to you know, play out for the worst and the banking crisis can play out. Then you can have you know, home defaults start to rise too fast. And that's where there's a, there's a little bit of a concern in the longer trend of things. Let's look at the dollar and yields and then we'll look at equity. Here in the DXY. Now, the dollar, again, you're below your level right there, 401.1. But again, like I said yesterday, you gotta get below the 200 SMA to be concerned or to be bearish. The end, you, you have to get below that level. If that doesn't happen, then you're just kind of trending no man's land until rates get cut or the fed um says something incredibly incredibly uh, bullish right the end okay this is what you really care about the u.s 30-year yield um again we talked about this you came and retested your your level again you've been trading in this box for around basically since you know december the beginning of december till basically uh the past few days right and as you can see trading in this range where is my toolbar right here you can see you're trading right here okay now you're breaking back up break retest continuing up this is detrimental to the market. This is not good, okay? So that's why I'm saying it's like, can stocks out do what's the damage that's gonna be happening with yields rising? Because again, interest rates will continue to hurt. Mortgages, that area of the market is going to hurt, okay? Um, and businesses overall will hurt with rates being this high and the 30-year yield continuing to rise. That is not good. It's also bad for banks and you know, led to some of the banks that are kind of going under again. So that's what we have to be concerned with there. Okay, so that's what I'm watching in the grand scheme of things here. Now, I'm not going to do an outro or anything like that. I'm just going to go right into what's happening with the S&P um, specifically. Okay, so we're going to go into stocks that we're liking into tomorrow. Now, again, as we look at the NQ here in the after hours, you continue to rip. ES is pushing towards 529 as we speak. It's doing its thing. It's very, very strong. Okay, it's probably going to continue. I can see NQ hitting 17.8. 
ES is, I think it's going to break 17 to or 52, nine. So looking at tomorrow, I think semiconductors got to be what you're looking at here. AMD, you literally got back above your key level of 164.5 and you're gapping into 170, 171. Um, for AMD, very simple, the same game plan, nothing has changed, 174.7, um, very simple. You want to see the break, the retest, continuation. That's your long on the break of in retest of 174.7. Um, Amazon added to the Dow. Amazon held up really well today. Your level that you're watching here on Amazon has been 164 or 167, roughly 167.3. You held that level today, but the level to the breakout has remained the same as well. It's around 171, roughly about right there. You've been rejected over and over and over at this level so far. So what you want to see is a breakout of this level. If Amazon can gap up, which it's going to do, and they can start getting a breakout of this level, I'm looking for a, uh, for a break of that level and continuation again. Got to be thinking about AWS, cloud names, things along those lines that are carrying and moving very well right now. Apple into tomorrow. Again, the 200 SMA is right up here. So again, you have a lot. And again, you're going to see it here on the chart, right? A lot of demands here. A lot of short-term time frames. A lot of sellers are stepping in this afternoon, right? But you want to see if you can break above the 200 mount and start pushing towards 187. If Apple gets back with the 200 SMA, I think a 187 push is highly, highly, highly likely. Um, so definitely keep that on the top of your watch list. Microsoft, another big name here. Key levels, key levels, key levels. You want to get back above, okay? You want to get back above around 403, the bottom of this little range down here where you were kind of bouncing over and over, or just even mark right there, right? 403.3, right? If you get back over that range, you're cooking. You could even get a little bit more aggressive if you break over a little swing highs you had here on Tuesday, okay? That's what I'd be looking for. Again, the break, retest, continuation into 407, possibly even 410. Microsoft's going to get a lot of love on this tomorrow. Highly, highly likely, unless sellers just negate everything overnight, which I don't think they will. Um, I think markets will continue running this up as we speak. Um, personal opinion there. Um, AVGO, very interesting. AVGO is gapping up to 1255. AVGO gets above 1277. You have a, little, a few little demands here, but I'm going to tell you right now, I like what I'm seeing. You start mounting 1277, you could start breaking back into all-time highs. It's highly, highly likely as well. Keep it on AVGO. I do like it a lot. You had a failed breakdown. So again, again, you're just seeing sellers not able to follow through and hold you down. That's been the going theme. Netflix. Okay, again, this was something that was interesting today as well. We've been talking a lot about what's happening here at 576. So 576 in particular here, right? You, you formed a demand here from our Outlooks algo. Again, links down below for all these down below, right? What you want to see is a break back above 576 retest and continuing back up. I'd be looking easily for 589 and then back into highs, possibly even 600. Netflix has been incredibly bullish, incredibly strong. Over 576 continuation is highly, highly likely. I love the demand you established there as well. Okay, another name, Meta. Okay, Meta back above 5, 5, or 474, 480, then 486 back in highs. Simple as that. Last one I'm going to talk about is Tesla. Um, absolute dog. It was one I really wanted to buy before market closed. I just didn't do it. I wanted to be safe. I wanted to practice what I preach, right? Just one post to do him, right? Okay, 194. We've had some great trades here. The first trade we had was back here. Discord, you remember it. You broke, retested, continued up, right? Awesome. Perfect. Great. If you mount 194, I'm looking for 197 and then back into the local highs that we had over here and supply level 201 and then possibly into 206. Mounting 194, it's an easy long. You have to be looking for it. Tesla is an absolute dog. It's holding up very well. Bulls are stepping in here. A lot of buyers are stepping in as well. I, and I do think shorts could have to start covering. If you get back above the 200 re region, it could get very interesting and this could really start swinging in the direction for bulls. But again, I will say this all depends on how NQ, how ES can hold up here. They look incredibly strong. We look really good. But can we hold this strength? Can we hold this momentum into tomorrow? Will bull step back in? So we want to see the reactions again. The main thing you're watching is can ES mount 5029? If that happens, in my opinion, you're pushing up. It's going to happen. So that's what I'm watching. That's a line in the sand, 5029. It's been the line in the sand and it remains it. So again, check out Twitter if you want to see updates. The link is down below as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.